Okay, so how well do you actually understand how to simplify expressions with a square root something like this? Well, if you're pretty strong with working with square root uh, expressions, well, you should be able to tell me two things about this problem right here. All right, so we have 2 over 2 plus the square root of 3. And the first thing that you should be able to tell me is that there is a problem. In other words, this uh, expression, as it's written, is not in a kind of a uh, correct mathematical form. But why? All right, so that's the first thing you should be able to tell me. And then the second thing you should be able to tell me is how we can rewrite this expression into a better, more uh, mathematically uh, correct expression, which is one of these answers down here. All right, so we have 2 over 2 plus the square root of 3, and this is equivalent to one of these expressions. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our answers, uh, because this obviously is a multiple choice question. So A is 1 over the square root of 3. B is the square root of 3 over 4. C is 1 over 1 plus the square root of 3. And D is 4 minus 2 times the square root of 3. All right, so if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to explain why this situation is a problem from a mathematical standpoint and how we fix this. This is a very critical topic, especially for those of you that might be studying algebra. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so once again, we have this expression, and uh, there is a problem here, right? So in other words, if you gave this to your teacher as your final answer, they likely would deduct points. All right, so this is equal to one of these expressions, and uh, let's take a look at the answer. The correct answer is D, 4 minus 2 times the square root of 3. All right, now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence because you appear to be a certified professional expert in the area of applying the conjugate to fix a radical or square root expression. Now, that is a mouthful, and if you told that to your friends and family, they'd be like, hey, I'm a certified pro in the conjugate and rationalizing uh, radical expressions. They'll be like, yeah, yeah, uh, that's very impressive. Leave me, uh, leave me alone. I'm going to go back to my Netflix. But uh, in all honesty, all jokes aside, if you were able to do this, that is very good. And if you're a bit confused, well, this is the perfect video for you because this is extremely important in mathematics. All right, but uh, let's take a look at our problem here. And let's suppose uh, you are a math student and you're like, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't really know what to do here. What should I, you know, what should I do if I come across a question like this on a math test or quiz for those of you that still have to take math exams? Well, if it's a multiple choice question, unless you're going to get penalized for getting the wrong answer, you should obviously take a guess. So hopefully some of you uh, took a guess. And I probably bet a lot of you may have selected this as your answer, right? Because you, you might be thinking, well, this two can go into that two, maybe one and one. So one over one plus the square root of three. It looks pretty good. And indeed, that is a great guess. Unfortunately, it's wrong. And uh, this uh, answer right here, one over the square root of three, uh, maybe these kind of cross cancel. Maybe this ends up this way. Well, this is wrong as well, but they are good um, <laughs> guesses. Unfortunately, the only way to really pick the right answer is to know what's going on here. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this right now and how we fix this situation, okay? Uh, this is, again, going to be a two-part um, question. How we fix this requires us to know something about the conjugate, right? This is a very fancy math term. And uh, even if you don't know what the term is and you got this right, well, that's fantastic. But uh, this is really what we're going to be talking about, right? But the conjugate is a, a little bit more of an advanced um, technique uh, beyond uh, fixing a more uh, kind of, um, well, I'm kind of stumbling over my words here. So in other words, if I had a simpler problem here, like one over the square root of three, this is a 
problem in mathematics as well. In other words, if we left our answer like this, your math teacher is not going to like it, right? So we need to know how to fix this, and of course, we need to know how to fix this. And to fix this uh, situation requires the conjugate, conjugate, uh, but to fix this situation uh, is something um, it's very similar, and it's basically using the same concept. It's called rationalizing the denominator. But uh, before we even get into, um, you know, fixing our problem, right, I haven't even told you why there is an actual issue with these values. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and explain that right now because um, this is really important for those of you that, are, again, uh, you know, taking a, um, you know, maybe a math course like algebra. All right, now, anytime you have a fractional kind of situation and in the denominator you have a square root well, you need to be on high alert, because especially if these square roots are what we call an irrational number. Now, it, it's, uh, you know, not every single square root. If you have the square root of 25, well, no problem. That's just equal to 5. But if you have something like the square root of 3, the square root of 7, this is a problem because what we're looking at here is something called an irrational number. All right, so why is this a problem? Well, let's first of all uh, take a look at um, 1 over the square root of 3. All right, now, if you go into your calculator and you want to get the actual decimal value for the square root of 3, you're going to get something like this. You're going to get 1.73205087. Uh, and now this goes on and on and on. And again, I'm describing this as an irrational number. Now, an irrational number is a, a decimal that doesn't repeat. In other words, there's not a repeating pattern here. It's not like 3 point two five two five two five something like this where you have a repeating pattern so there's no um, pattern here that's repeating and it doesn't terminate in other words we have to go out to infinity to get the entire uh, decimal value of the square root of three now we never want to divide anything by a number that never ends so uh, let's take a look at a simple kind of um, uh, concept here Let's suppose I want to take a pizza and I want to slice it into four uh, slices, right? No big deal. Here's one, two, three, four. Uh, but let's say uh, we have the same pizza and we want to divide it by the, square, uh, by the square root of three, right? So how many slices would we actually have? Well, we're trying to divide the pizza uh, by a number that never really ends, right? So dividing a value by an irrational number uh, it just doesn't make sense. So what we want to do is get this irrational uh, number, the square root of 3, we want to get it out of the denominator, right? So we're going to have to fix up this expression such that uh, we get this radical or this square root in the numerator. It's perfectly fine to have a square root in the numerator. You just don't want uh, to, be, uh, uh, to have a an irrational number in the denominator. You don't want to be dividing by an irrational number. All right, so if you understand uh, kind of this simple example, well, then uh, I'm going to show you exactly how we fix this situation up uh, because what we're going to be doing here is very similar to what we're going to be doing an actual problem, but the terms are different. All right, so we have 1 over the square root of 3. Again, if you turn this uh, in this as, like, let's say, a, as a final answer to a math question, your teacher would not like this. They'll be like, hey, uh, there is a problem here. You need to fix this. So how do we fix this? Well, we're going to do something called rationalizing the denominator. All right, so that's another fancy term, rationalizing the denominator. So we're going to take this irrational number, and we're going to make it rational. All right, so um, how are we going to do that? Well, we're just going to multiply this thing by 1. All right, so 1 over the square root of 3, we're going to multiply it by 1. Now, when we multiply anything by 1, we just get what we're, what we're multiplying by, right? So anything by times 1 is just what it is, right? So no big deal. But uh, the 1 that we're going to use is a kind of a fancy 1. All right, so let me go ahead and show you this right now. So 1 over the square root of 3, we're going to multiply it by 1. But the 1 that we're going to use is a very fancy 1, and that is the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. All right, so basically, you're going to take whatever is in the denominator, and you're going to multiply this fraction by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, or whatever is down here, right? So in this case, it's the square root of 3. And we're going to take that, and we're going to divide it by the square root of 3. Now, anything divided by itself is 1, 
Okay, so a lot of um, math students, people go, oh, well, we're changing the problem. No, this is just a fancy one. So we're not changing the value, but uh, it's going to be a very useful uh, one because when we multiply across here, again, we're going to be multiplying these two fractions. We're going to get rid of this irrational number in the denominator. Again, this is called rationalizing the denominator. And uh, let's go and take a look at uh, uh, the results of doing this. So we're going to have 1 times the square root of 3, which is the square root of 3. Now we have the square root of 3 times the square root of 3. That's equal to the square root of 9. All right, so when you multiply two square roots, you just multiply the numbers underneath the square roots. So we have the square root of 9, and that's awesome because the square root of 9 is equal to 3. All right, so now uh, we basically took 1 over the square root of 3, and we wrote it as... Uh, we uh, kind of rewrote it as a square root of 3 over 3. Now we have a rational number, okay, a nice lovely whole number down here in the denominator, and we have our irrational number up in the numerator. So this is perfectly fine, uh, and that's exactly what we want. So you want to be on the lookout for irrational numbers in the denominator because uh, they're not, from a mathematical standpoint, you're not really kind of allowed to leave an expression like that. All right, so what we're going to be doing here is using the conjugate, which is basically this same principle um, as basically uh, multiplying by a fancy one. All right, so uh, let's go to take that next step, which of course is have you first quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. I definitely need your help and support to continue to make these videos. Now, I love teaching math. I've been on YouTube for uh, 10 plus years. I think I'm over probably at this uh, time 3,000 uh, math videos on YouTube alone. You know, it's a lot of, you know, effort to make these videos, but it's a kind of a labor of love because I love teaching mathematics. And the reason why I love teaching math is to really help people not give up on the subject, right? Oftentimes, uh, too many people, you know, they have it in their mind that they're just not good at math. They're like, um, I'm just not smart enough as due to math, man. You know, I'm not a math person. I hate math. Uh, you know, uh, that is not, you know, well, you may not like the subject, right? So I, I can understand that. But in terms of your uh, being smart enough to learn mathematics, that is not the case. So the number one thing if you want to learn or improve in math is you have to change your mindset. Now, uh, sometimes uh, people say, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, just, get, just teach math. Uh, you know, don't give me all this other, you know, personal development stuff. Well, I'm just telling you from decades of teaching math, I cannot teach math to someone, okay? Uh, so I'm going to teach you math. If this person over here is like, well, I'm just not good in math, Mr. YouTube Math Man. I can't understand it. Uh, there's no way I can get it. Well, it doesn't make a difference how clear and understandable my instruction is. If you are determined not to understand it, you're not going to succeed. So um, this is a really important message. Unfortunately, it's not um, you know, a common enough me uh, message uh, for those people out there struggling with math. But I'm telling you, don't give up and work on your mental mindset. And if you need full math instruction, okay, real true help in mathematics, check out my full main math courses. You'll find links to those in the description of this video. But uh, anyways, I can definitely use your support. So hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, so let's get back to this problem. And now that we have an understanding that uh, having an irrational number in the denominator is a problem, well, we need to fix this thing up. So if you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, are we gonna multiply by a fancy one? Yes, indeed we are. But we have a little scenario down here. We have two plus the square root of three. So uh, multiplying by the square root of three over the square root of three, it's not going to fix this situation, right? So in other words, if we just had two over the square root of three, uh, multiplying by the square root of three over the square root of three would fix this situation. This again is called rationalizing uh, the, uh, the denominator. But uh, in this particular case, we need to use a fancy concept called the conjugate. It's basically the same idea. In other words, we're gonna be multiplying by one but we need to recognize something called the conjugate, and here it is. All right, so we have two over two plus the square root of three. Now here, our denominator, uh, two plus the square root of three, its conjugate is two minus the square root of three. So what is the conjugate? Well, what we're looking at here is a binomial, like A plus B, all right? So if you have a binomial, two things being um, uh, that you're adding or subtracting, uh, the conjugate is basically the same thing but opposite sign. So it's going to be A minus B. So if you have 
2 minus the square root of 3. The conjugate is 2 plus the square root of 3. So it's the exact same thing, but just different signs. So you're going to go from plus to minus or minus to plus. So uh, this is the conjugate. All right, so that is it. And you're going to see why this is uh, critical, right? And I'll show you this in a second. But remember, we want to multiply this expression by a fancy 1. So we're going to multiply uh, 2 over 2 plus the square root of 3 times 2 minus the square root of 3 over 2 minus the square root of 3. Again, this is 1. But uh, just to be clear, uh, the, uh, this uh, denominator down here, 2 plus the square root of 3, the conjugate is this thing right here. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. And you're going to see why, uh, because when we have a binomial, like 2 plus the square root of 3, we want to get rid of all the square root and 2. We want to get this down to one number. And uh, what we want to do is use the conjugate to do this. All right, so let's go ahead and actually do all the multiplication uh, to figure this out. So this is going to be 2 times 2 minus the square root of 3. And then we have to multiply this times this. All right, so uh, let's take a look at this uh, problem right now and focus in on the next steps, which is uh, using the distributive property here. So we're going to take this 2, multiply it times this 2 and this uh, square root of 3. And then here, uh, hopefully you know how to multiply two binomials. So in other words, if I gave you a problem like uh, oh, something like uh, 2x plus y times uh, x minus y, hopefully uh, you know how to do that multiplication using something like the FOIL technique, first, outer, inner, last. Now, if you're like, boy, I'm totally confused, Mr. YouTube Math Man, well then, you know, we are talking about algebra, so you might want to check out like my Algebra 1 course. Uh, you'll find links to that, a link to that in the description of this video, or maybe my Math Skills Rebuilder course. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get, get into this multiplication. Well, let's do uh, the multiplication for the numerator, and then we'll do the multiplication for the denominator separately, and then we'll put this all together. All right, so uh, here is the numerator. So we have 2 times 2 times uh, 2 times the uh, parentheses 2 minus the square root of 3 and parentheses. So this is going to be 2 times 2, which is 4, and 2 times the square root of 3, which is 2 times the square root of 3. And then here, so this is our numerator. And now uh, let's go ahead and work on the denominator. So we have 2 plus the square root of 3 times its conjugate, 2 minus the square root of 3. All right, so again, we're going to use the FOIL technique. Uh, so that's the first outer, inner, last. If you've never heard of, the, heard of that before, it's kind of a standard way to teach um, how to multiply two bi uh, binomials. All right, so first, well, let me write this up here, F-O-I-L. Um, so first is the first term. So two times two, these are the first terms of these two binomials. So two times two is four. All right, so what are the outer terms? Well, that would be two and negative square root of 3, so 2 times the negative square root of 3 is minus 2 times the square root of 3. Uh, what are the inner terms? Well, that would be 2 times the square root of 3, so that's that right there. And what are the last terms? That's the square root of 3 times negative square root of 3, which is a negative square root of 9. All right, so now we need to go ahead and simplify this. And when we do that, we're going to get what? Well, we're going to get a 4. And here we have negative... Uh, 2 times the square root of 3 plus 2 times the square root of 3. So these uh, right here cross cancel. And then we get minus the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is what? That's 3. All right, so we have 4 minus 3, which is a 1. So that's awesome because now when we go back and take a look at our problem, uh, when we multiply by the conjugate, what we did was rationalize that denominator. We got rid of the, that uh, irrational number, that radical, uh, because that all uh, turned out to be equal to 1. And, of course, we have our numerator, uh, numerator here, 4 minus 2 times the square root of 3. So there is the final answer, or uh, we kind of just drop this over 1. So really, it's just 4 minus 2 times the square root of 3. All right, so this is an absolute critical algebra skill and concept. Again, uh, square roots and radicals are all over the place in mathematics, but uh, I'm using terms like uh, rational numbers, irrational numbers. These are things that you learn in kind of like basic algebra, you know, like pre-algebra. But a lot of students, you know, I think they uh, th uh, think they understand the basics uh, better than they actually do. So never feel bad about going back and reviewing, you know, some of these basic concepts in mathematics. That is the smart thing to do. All right, so hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. 
And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.